St. Action Group has been accused by certain council members of the Dandarabin Shire Council of fearmongering. This in spite of the fact that the evidence we have provided, doctors' reports, scientific studies, a witness testimony is irrefutable and repeatedly corroborated. Further to this, I would like you to kindly view this following victim statement and then accuse us of fear mongering. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I'm new to this public speaking thing, so bear with me. Um, like she said, my name is Jamie Frederick. I'm from Coitsville, Ohio. Um, shortly after moving into my home in Coitsville, just outside of Youngstown, three years ago, I began to get seriously ill. I started vomiting on a regular basis and had intense abdominal pains every day. After numerous trips to six different doctors and several emergency room visits, tests revealed that my gallbladder had completely failed. No gallstones, it had just stopped working, and no one could tell me why. I had my gallbladder taken out, but continued to have what seemed to be a never-ending intestinal flu. It became so bad that I soon developed an infection in my intestine as large as a grapefruit that ate through to the outside of my skin. When I was finally admitted to the hospital, doctors said that I would have been dead in a few days had I not come in when I did. They were baffled and could only tell me that this should not be happening to a healthy 30-year-old woman and that this condition is typically only found in third world countries. Over the course of the next two years, I underwent a series of five more surgeries in an attempt to repair the damage that had been caused by the infection. I continued to get violently ill and had elevated kidney and liver numbers, kidney infections, pain throughout my body, trouble breathing, rapid heartbeat, and many other unexplained symptoms. I continued to search for answers, seeing 18 different doctors in total who continued to misdiagnose and scratch their heads. Some told me that I was just stressed out and that when you are stressed out, you dehydrate and that I should drink as much water as possible. I know now that this advice nearly killed me. As we burned through our savings with thousands of dollars in medical bills, the answers never came as to why this was happening to me. It wasn't until a few months ago when the convoys of trucks and drilling equipment began rolling down our once lonely, quiet road did the answers to my medical mystery unfold. The neighboring property owner, who lives out of town, had signed a gas lease before we had even moved there and never bothered to tell us. Bocor Gas felt that out of the 62 acres signed off by my neighbor, that the best place to drill would be right next to our home, about as close as the law would allow them. As we scrambled to learn all that we could about what was happening to us, what rights we had or didn't, and how to stop it, we discovered that a special kind of water test, a tier three test, would have to be done to establish a baseline before the drilling began and that we would have to pay for it ourselves. The cheapest test offered was $500. We managed to get the test done only two days before they started drilling. Our baseline test revealed high levels of contaminants that are a result of the hydraulic fracturing and drilling process, such as high levels of barium, strontium, toluene, and several others that I will not try to pronounce. The mystery was now solved. This was clearly why I had been so sick for so long and my dogs as well. At the time when I was most sick, I was drinking over two gallons of this water unfiltered each day. As we dug deeper, we discovered that several wells had already been drilled and were tucked quietly away in the woods that surrounded our home on other properties. This was never disclosed to us when we bought the house. My husband never got sick because he hardly ever drank any water at home. I always bugged him to drink more water and I'm glad now that, like most husbands, he never listened to me. It's hard to say which one of the 10 wells within a half mile, 15 within a mile, actually caused the contamination. It only takes one bad well to poison a water table that can sometimes stretch out for over a mile. In some places, that's a lot of homes. As bad as this all sounds, the worst has yet to come. Living through the drilling and fracking phase of the most recent well was a truly terrifying experience. We were given no notice whatsoever as to what was about to happen to us and had nowhere to evacuate to with our three dogs and cat. We felt like we were trapped 
and someone's idea of a sick joke. 24-7, nonstop, we were subjected to such unbelievable levels of noise that you could only understand if you've heard it for yourself. It would have been more peaceful to live on an airport runway. We couldn't sleep for days at a time, and when we did, it was only short naps in between explosions. We tried using earplugs covered by these headphones while listening to the radio and could still plainly hear it. Worse yet, we could feel it as a constant vibration through the house. That was just the drilling. The actual fracking lasted about three days. Now that I get to live through Youngstown's injection well earthquakes, I can tell you that that is what it is similar to. Dishes rattling in the cupboards, pictures falling off of the walls, cracking sounds in the basement. Like so many of you, I'm sure, I love my dogs with all of my heart. I have never seen them so terrified and hope I never will again. They cowered together in a corner, shaking uncontrollably for days. They would not go outside and they would not eat. I was unable to do anything to help them other than put a radio near them in hopes of masking the noise and calming them down. The gas storage tanks and radioactive toxic waste tanks, I, I refuse to call it brine, I'm sorry, because that is just a lie. That is not what it is. <laughs> These tanks have been placed even closer to my home than the well itself. They are right outside my bedroom window and just uphill from a fresh artesian spring on my property. The overflow hose that comes out of the radioactive toxic waste tank goes directly onto the ground, and this is permitted because they get to lie and call it brine. I would not soak my pickles or my turkey in this. They are also permitted to bury the toxic wastewater pit on my neighbor's property just uphill from our home. The gas storage tank is now hooked up and under high pressure. It regularly releases the pressure putting the toxic fumes into the air and makes a lot of noise. It will do this for at least six more months. A smell similar to rotten eggs and diesel fumes hangs heavy in the air. ODNR tells me that it is perfectly safe and that I am in more danger breathing in the air in a parking lot. First of all, I don't live in a parking lot. And secondly, when I get in my car in a parking lot, it is not covered with an oily mist like now falls over our property and is seen easily on our house and car windows. I'm sure this is perfectly safe too, right ODNR? Everyone asks me why I'm not more upset with my neighbor and why I don't sue him. I tell them because not only do we have no rights, but that I feel that he was taken advantage of by Bocor Gas. They forced him to sign the lease when he was intoxicated, with no notary present. And they told him it would be no bigger operation than drilling a water well, and that the only thing left behind would be the size of a garbage can and surrounded by trees that they would plant. All lies, and there's still no trees. They also buried the toxic radioactive waste pit in the exact location where he told them he was planning to build a home to retire in. Bocor also managed to rip him off in the tune of over $300,000 in acreage payments. He said that if he knew then what he knows now, that he never would have signed and that he is very sorry. They have already destroyed the land that has been in his family for generations, dating back to the early 1800s and they are just getting started. Our little house in the middle of the woods will soon be in the middle of a toxic wasteland as they prepare to cut down the remaining trees to put in the pipelines and compressor stations that will eventually connect the wells. Our property value has been reduced from 125,000 to nothing overnight. 47 wells, including injection wells, already cover the square miles that is Coitsville, even surrounding the wildlife preserve. We have already had a blowout of at least one well, a chemical spill, and a tear in a waste pit liner. And again, they are only getting started. I haven't retested the water since the last well was drilled, but I have a feeling it didn't make it cleaner. Even if I wanted to have it retested, we have nothing left, having spent every penny on water testing water filtration equipment, medical bills, and renovating a home that we thought we were going to raise a family in. We now check our faucets daily with a lighter and are still hopeful because it hasn't ignited yet. 
I'm feeling much better these days, and so are my dogs since we stopped drinking the water. My liver and kidney numbers have improved, but much damage has been done. I have developed kinetic tremors in my hands as a result of the neurological side effects of some of the chemicals. But the worst side effect caused by the damage is my inability to safely carry a child without the risk of hemorrhage or even death. Even if I could somehow still give birth, knowing the risk of knowing the high risk of birth defects caused by the chemicals I drank, I will never take that risk. At the time when I was most sick, drinking the most water, I lay on the bathroom floor night after night, thinking I would surely be dead soon, throwing up until the blood vessels in my eyes and cheeks were burst. At that time, I did not know what fracking was or that I was being deliberately poisoned, but I do now. And I have a message for you, Governor Kasich, and to you, Mr. Gasman. You may have taken my safety and my property value. You may have taken my gallbladder and you may have taken my ability to have children, but you will not take my voice. And I will not stop until you stop. We will not stop until you stop. Thank you. So, if you still want to stick with your deeply offensive nonsense of fear-mongering, feel free to do so. But be aware of this. We will not tolerate this. It is intolerable and it will be stopped and you will be prosecuted for genocide because that's what it is. Thank you for your time.